This morning, you're my desire. Treasure of my heart and of my so sing it, come on. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh Jesus, we seek your face. Your speak that out today. Lord, we desire you. We desire your presence, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. A million tongues will never be enough to tell all you have done with everything within my memory. So I say thank you, Jesus. You were faithful, you Thank you. 
have been blessed of the Lord more than what we dreamt of. God has blessed us more than what we have asked for. Exceedingly abundantly is our testimony. Even the things we didn't ask for, God indeed have made it readily available for us. We are beneficiaries of his blessings. We are privileged beneficiaries of God's daily blessings. Just like David the psalmist says, that he daily lord us with his benefit hallelujah this great afternoon here we are again in god's presence thanking him for yet again loading us with his blessings that fit the bends in our lives will you join me as we appreciate god this god that has been so loving this god that has been so caring this god that have wrought diverse deliverances in our lives father thank you you have blessed us more than what we ask for you have blessed us more than what we have dreamt of father we are grateful thank you for this opportunity you've granted us again to commune with you on this prayer altar of midday travel of Hannah midday father thank you thank you for what you are said to do in our lives thank you for your word that will be receiving today Thank you even for grace, for intercession. I give you glory for the lives of men and women that have already tuned in from different locations for this program today. Lord, let everyone's expectations be met by you. I ask of you, O oh God, that no one will leave this platform the same way they came in. Every issue of concern, Father, you will attend to it. You will attend to it. Every question that will be presented before you. Father, we ask that you give a clear direction in the name of Jesus. Because you are God that hears and answers prayers. Lord, attend to everyone, O oh God. Thank you, Father. We know, O oh God, when, we ha when you have it with you, you will not ask anyone to go and come back. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. I'm excited having you tune in for today's uh, Travel of Hannah Interdenominational Women Prayer Platform, the Midday Prayer Session. You are highly welcome in Jesus' name. Have you shared this broadcast? Quickly tap on the share button, share the link with your friends, welcome them. You never can tell there's someone somewhere still waiting for this link from you. So why do you want to deny that precious sister, that precious brother? Why do you want to deny them the opportunity of coming to fellowship with their maker? Please share the broadcast. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste our time because today is too loaded. I began a teaching on the beauty of brokenness and we had a great time last week, Wednesday. And in case you missed that session, please go to my YouTube channel or this same Travel of Hannah Facebook page. Get yourself refreshed. The teaching was awesome and God isn't true with us yet. We are still continuing on the same. And today we are so blessed of God to have God's servant with us. 
in the person of Pastor Blessing David Labi, Mama Mkubwa, as she's fondly called over here in Kenya. She said to minister to us in this session, she will actually take the entire session even to the end, praise the Lord. So I want us to listen attentively and open our hearts. The Bible says Lydia is a love purple, open her heart. When she heard the word of God, she opened her heart and she was ministered to. I would like you to open your heart in today's session so that God can minister to you at a personal, at a personal level. Mumilabi, thank you for always accepting our invitation. Thank you for being a blessing to the entire travel of HANA community. Always, we love you, we value you, we celebrate you. Thank you, the Lord reward you immensely. Ladies and gentlemen, join me, make welcome none other but Pastor Blessing David Labi, all the way from FCT, Nigeria. You are welcome, Mommy Labi. Over to you. Let's celebrate her with a clap offering. Amen. You're welcome, Ma. We give you glory. For you alone are worthy. You deserve the glory. King of kings, Lord of lords, there is none that can be compared to you. Father in heaven, we worship you. This hour, we give you praise and we thank you for the privilege of bringing us into the second week of a new month in the year 2023. Receive all the honor, receive our adoration. And above all, we want to thank you for constantly answering us on this platform. Thank you for new directions. Thank you for inspiration. We give you praise for testimonies and life-changing encounters we have always encountered on this platform. To you be all the praise. To you be all the glory. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you, blessed Redeemer. We give you praise, Lord. 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 Give you praise, Lord. Give you praise Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way. Honor the Father, glorify the Son, and let all and all that will be done today bring you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Good afternoon, Kenya. Good morning, Nigeria. And good afternoon and good morning from wherever you are connecting from. God bless and increase you. And I would like to specially welcome all of you again online on behalf of God's servant, Pastor Favor Wallet Joseph. This is saying that we love you. We appreciate your consistency and we appreciate your presence always uh, on this platform. May the Lord God of heaven that you have always come to seek meet you at the very point of your need. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Mama Wale, thank you so much, Ma, for this great opportunity. I have so missed uh, futuring with you on Travel of Hannah. But uh, I tell you the truth that this platform has always, have always been a blessing. And it will continually be a blessing. It has so personally blessed me, I tell you the truth especially the series that is on now on brokenness on brokenness it is it's a topic i so much love the beauty of brokenness and i i love the topic because truly there is beauty in this. and while you were teaching last week wednesday where i sat i was i was so covered with the presence of god the atmosphere was was too charged why because this is the topic for the believer. We are like in a theater to deal with ourselves as children of God. When, when you are addressing the issue of brokenness, brokenness and unbeliever cannot be talking about broken, being broken. It is the believer that needs to be broken. So as it were, this month is the believer's therapy that is ongoing. God wants to cleanse us 
God wants to repair us, remold us, reposition us, realign us so that our destinies can be actualized. I tell you the truth. There are some things that must be done in our lives, in our character, disposition, and whatever, if God must work with us. Remember the story of Jacob. A time came, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 32, that Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with God. Why was Jacob left alone? And while wrestling, the reason Jacob had to create an atmosphere to wrestle with God was because that there is an aspect of Jacob that couldn't fit into the covenant. You know, God is a covenant God, and our work with him is on the terms of the covenant. Is 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 built on the covenant form, and if we are carrying certain baggages, such baggages can't fit into the covenant, and that is why the need for the call to be broken as a child of God. And like our, our mama said last week, she said, brokenness is a position where God dominates all that in you. You bring yourself under the atmosphere, the platform where God is the Lord over all. Do you know that even in the church, God is not the Lord over everyone. There are certain aspects of our lives that we are still the Lord over <laughs> such aspects. I tell you the truth. Like those days, I want to start with my story. I, 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 I got born again, and I love fashion. Is fashion a sin? No. But I love wearing gold jewelry. If I dress without heavy gold jewelry, and uh, the first place I went to after my salvation, actually, so the person that led me to cry, that introduced the foundation of my salvation, was a deeper life woman. And then, she encouraged me to be in church one of the Sundays. And I went to church. And then we were called as first-timers to sit in front. And then the sitting in front, I was with my healthy gold jewelry. And you know, in deeper life, you don't put on such uh, costumes <laughs> in church. And uh, it's not a sin, but that is their doctrine. And then the pastor was just centered preaching on what I was putting on. I was not comfortable. But I sat, I told myself, if serving God, if this is the way to serve God, to hinder me from putting on my expensive gold jewelry costume, I said, I'm not coming back to this church. And that was the last they saw of me. I never went back again. And then there was this second invitation to a particular assembly. And I went. And then First time as we were asked to the front, we went to the front, and as the pastor would round up the service, he, he he was blessing first timers and said, "Time congregation should go on their knees." Do you know what happened to me? I went on my knees in that church. I couldn't get up. I lifted my hands sideways. I couldn't bring them down. I had the voice of God literally. I saw the nails that were pierced in Jesus' hand. And then God took me to the position of the cross. He said, today I am nailing flesh in this person. I am nailing flesh. Nobody knew what was happening to me. I, God alone, knew what was happening. All I had, because the pastor said everybody should uh, get up and then sit down. I couldn't get up. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't bring my hands together. I was sobbing. Mokus were coming out of my nose. I couldn't pick my hanky to clean. Most were running through my mouth. Me, that no fashion and no beauty. And look at that disgrace. But it was a righteous disgrace. In fact, it was not a disgrace per se. God permitted it to prove me. Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 1 that I am the true vine and my father is the one man. Every branch in it that bearing not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that bearing fruit, he forged it that it may bring forth more fruit. And in verse, uh, verse 5, 
He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He abided in me and I in him. The same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And look at it. He said that in verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men guard them and cast them into the fire and they are born. The Bible says if he does not prove us, if we are not pruned, if we are not pruned, we can bear fruit. So this is part of the pruning that God introduced in the life of a believer with the purpose of making you more fruitful. And, and, and you see, fruitfulness is not only uh, about you giving back to you uh, the fruit of the womb. No, fruitfulness is about you living a life that glorifies God. In your Christian work with God, you have a testimony. In your business, you have a testimony. In your career, testimony. Everything out your life is reflecting the glory of God. Then you actualize each other says, then may see and give glory to Father who is in heaven. When pruning, pruning is not introduced, there is no beauty that men will see in you and even give glory to our Father who is in heaven. We are talking about the beauty of brokenness. And I'm bringing it to the link of understanding today that part of pruning can be referred to as brokenness that is god removing removing the flesh killing the flesh removing what will not allow his true reflection in your life to be out of the way because one of the definition mama gave us on wednesday is that brokenness brings you or makes you dead to the flesh it kills the desires of the flesh. It makes you live a life wholly, wholly sacrificially unto God. That is, you, you, you are ready to pay the price to be who God wants you to be with ease. And she told us that part of the things God does when he is breaking us is to remove from us the accessories that hinder us from getting broken. The accessories that hinder us from getting broken. And you see, part of the accessories is what Christ does when he comes to prune. He removed those things that will not allow us to look like him. And that was what he did to me. He came that day and with my hands stretched out, he nailed my flesh. He nailed my flesh to the cross. And I had him say to me that day, he said, I'm nailing the in the flesh in you to the cross so that you'll be able to live out my will so that you will be able to do the things I will ask or want you to do. Do you know that without brokenness you can't do the will of God? In fact, it becomes an impossible case for you to obey some instructions when you are not broken before God. Like for instance, God telling you now go empty your account and give the money or drop it in an offering basket. It takes someone who is broken to take it to that kind of instruction. So today I will be talking about one of the accessories that God dealt with in my life. I told you from the beginning that I love expensive jewelries, not just anyhow jewelries, gold jewelries. My gold jewelries were heavy ones, heavy ones. And then I can go to the market from morning till evening, window shopping. I've said it severally on so many platforms. I love buying things. Little did I know that the accessory of covetousness was in me. And the day Christ told me that I am nailing the flesh on the cross today in you with all its desires, one of the things God killed that day was this one called covetousness. And that's the one I'll be talking about today. That covetousness, just like we were told last week Wednesday, pride is one of the accessories that hinders us from getting broken. Arrogance 
is one of the accessories mama mentioned because god can use a vessel that is not clean and then when when when, when some of these accessories are in us uh, it, it does not inform the state of our brokenness because brokenness brings you to the position where you sing this song have your way lord have your way in everything i do have your way to the things i say have your way lord jesus have your way in my thoughts lord have your way in my dressing lord have your way in the things i buy have your way lord jesus have your way you, you know we sing this song but the truth is that if you are dressing in the morning do you ask god god which clothes should i put on do you engage the holy ghost that shows that we are not truly asking him to have his way in everything have you haven't you prayed some prayers and then you already have the answer in your heart you don't want god to say no you want him to say yes if you have not prayed that kind of prayer me i have that i want god to say yes so i don't care whether it is his will or not but god i want you to say yes because i want this thing so such a state is not the state that makes one like a vessel that is broken my own challenge was covetousness i i i i was i was this woman that loves fashion i love to have everything i see on friends around me i love to buy i wasn't stealing thank god <laughs> i wasn't begging thank god i was working in a place that truly i had the money to buy whatever i want to buy but i was not thinking all the money coming i was using it to dress myself i was using it to to buy things that i don't even that would make a future out of my destiny is it room to buy uh, clothing materials it's not it's not that when god is bringing money to someone's direction i think part of the things that person is to do is to find out lord what do i need or what do i use this money for should i use it for an investment should i use it for this should i use it for that you will be sensitive to find out the mind of god concerning the resources that is flowing towards your direction i wasn't that kind of a, a woman that was ready to find out the mind of christ concerning the inflow of finances towards my direction because i already have a target i've seen one rapper no matter how much it will cost me i i tell you in those days twenty thousand was like five hundred thousand i can use twenty thousand and buy a rapper at once just one rapper for twenty thousand nigerian currency without feeling bad so that was how it was but look at it this way I want us to look at something about covetousness. The Bible defines it or spiritually or scripturally, we define covetousness as a strong urge or strong desire to possess something. A strong desire to possess something. So since it is a strong desire to possess something, the God factor in that thing that you desire to possess is not longer in view with that person that is covetous why because you will always want to satisfy satisfy that quest satisfy that urge satisfy it it, 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 it becomes like a, a drug abuse to a drug user that if you do not take this drug you run as if you are mad that is how it is so the urge can make you that's why sometimes some people will even go borrowing it can push you into borrowing it can push you into begging you become a servant of all why because of a strong urge to possess something so whether it is time for you to possess that thing or it is not time for you to possess that thing because the urge is in you you don't care how it will come it must come it must come that was an accessory and it was bearing root around me it became it, it became it became it became like part of my lifestyle in fact i didn't see anything bad in it as far as i'm concerned i was living life and enjoying myself 
But that day that I had that encounter with God, it killed that desire in me. I can come out of the house today without gold jewelries and not feel anything. But those days, if I walk out without putting on gold jewelries, it's like something in my life is missing. So that shows that I was controlled my materialistic and uh, my how will i put it now materially i was controlled by material the things to put on the things to 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 to, to decorate or, or or beautify myself with i was concerned more about them a strong urge a strong desire to possess something and this sometimes leads to discontentment and the bible says it is godliness with contentment that is of a great gain. Godliness with contentment that is of a great gain. So contentment can only be in the life of one that is broken. You are eating bread without tea. You are contented with what you have. You don't have clothes to put on. You are contented with whatever you have. In fact, a broken person does not look at what the other person is putting on to determine how he or she should come out of the house. A broken person does not care what another person is driving. A broken person does not care what you have in your house. A broken person does not care what you eat in your house. But you see a person that is not broken, that is controlled by the accessories of covetousness, will keep a border on how to come out. Will bother when he or she discovers that you have a television set that is bigger than the one they have in their own house because that person will be looking out for money how will i get this kind of television in my own house a broken person a, a, a covetous person will always live or in the realms of competition competition class competition because i want to belong or I want to feel belong to a particular class of people, so I must look like them. Covetousness is an accessory that must be removed. If I must be a vessel that is totally dominated by God, because that is what we define by the term brokenness. God is interested in us being broken because our life is to be lived under the control of the spirit of god and that's why romans chapter 8 verse 14 says they as many as are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god let god lead you in every aspect of your life let god lead you in fact to the things you need to buy in your house let god lead you to the things you need to put on let god lead you a broken person lives for god Covetousness will always make you to take note of the things happening in your atmosphere, the things happening in the environment where you live, the things happening in the society where you live, the things in vogue, the things trending worldly, not the things trending spiritually. Covetousness. In fact, covetousness can keep someone on the internet trying to find out the latest time. And forgetting that I need to spend time to invest spiritually so that my better part in life, the things that have not yet been actualized in my hand, can be found or put in my hand. Covetousness. It eats you up as a, as, as, as a believer. It, it takes more from you than even you give in to it. It takes from you. We saw the story of Gehazi. Gehazi allowed covetousness in the book of Second Kings, chapter five, verse twenty-seven. Second Kings, chapter five, verse twenty-seven. I quickly read. Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter five, verse twenty-seven. The Bible says, "The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman, shall cleave unto thee." This is. Elisha, Elisha telling Gehazi. Let, let me read from verse 21 to give us on the better understanding. Verse 20, the Bible says, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master had speared Naaman, this Syrian in not receiving at his hand, 
that which he brought. That is, Elisha refused to receive the things Naaman brought. And then, mm. and then Gehazi now looked for a way to collect back those things that Naaman brought and Gehazi refused to accept from the hand of Naaman. And verse 20, the Bible says, that as the Lord liveth, that's Gehazi talking, that as the Lord liveth, my master refused to collect from the hand of Naaman, but for me, as the Lord liveth, see, it has linked us again to the definition of what covetousness is. A strong urge to lay hold on possessions. A stronghold to have something. You don't care how it will come back by all means. By fire, by force, I must have it. That was what Gehazi, paraventure, was saying to himself. Because he said, as the Lord live it. That is, I don't care. But as long as the Lord live it. I will run after Naaman and take somewhat of him. That is, I will collect what he brought. And my master refused to collect from his hand. I believe at that point, when Elisha was telling Naaman, no, I don't need it. Go with your things. Go with your the things you brought. Gehazi might have been saying in his heart, what a foolish master I have. What a stupid master I have. Why should he refuse to collect these things that Naaman have brought? And look at it in verse 21. The Bible says, remember in verse 20, the last part of verse 20, he said, as the Lord liveth, I will run after and collect what this man brought. And verse 21 said, so Gehazi followed after Naaman. He lied to his master probably. I want to go and ease myself. But deep in his heart, he was out to follow Naaman to collect back those things. A strong urge to lay hold on possession. Verse 21 says, So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Verse 22 and he said, all is well. My master had sent me. What a lie. Covetousness sometimes makes you go in as a liar. Covetousness sometimes makes you go on as a beggar. Covetousness sometimes makes you live a life of prostitution. Because by all means, you want to get it. So it doesn't matter. All means is all means. And sometimes, covetousness can make you steal. It makes you steal because you want to have it by all means. And you don't care how it comes. And that was why Gehazi probably said, as long as the Lord liveth, I must go after this man. And here the lie he told him. He said, my master has sent me, saying, behold, even now, there be come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver. And two changes of garment. Can you imagine? A, 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 a what? A talent of silver. And two changes of garment. That was all he needed. And he ran. And verse 23. The Bible says, And Naaman said, Be content. So I believe Naaman wasn't born again. But he was passing a message to Gehazi indirectly. Be content. Instead of one, I am giving you two. What an enticement. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garment and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. And verse 24. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the men go. And they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. That is, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. I was just behind. And like I said, I just went to ease myself. I was just behind here. 
Verse 26. And he said unto him, When not my heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet with thee, that's now Elisha was talking to Gehazi prophetically that my spirit followed you. I went with you. I saw when Naaman dropped, I lighted from his chariot and followed you. And I saw when you received money and garment from him. And verse 27, he said, The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto their seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as a snow. This is a pointer that when you allow the accessories of covetousness, it breeds around you, it breeds around your seed, it leaves a generational consequences. Why? Because this thing might have made a liar out of you. It might have made a borrower out of you. It might have made you look like one who does not have direction towards where you're going. Never contented with what you have. Never contented with what you have. And in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 8, the Bible tells us that the cure for content, uh, for, for covetousness is contentment. And you see, God warns against covetousness. In Luke chapter 12 verse 15, he says, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possessed. God was addressing it, warning us that we should be careful with the spirit of covetousness. I believe it was the spirit of covetousness that entered into the, the, the Korah and coal in the wilderness that went ahead to gather to steal the silver and whatever. And the Bible says in one day the earth opened and swallowed all of them. They were not contented. They were not okay with what they have. And you see this thing called covetousness. So many of us working with government or with some organization, this is the reason or this is the, 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 the spirit that pushes us to add figures. Because we want to make it by all means. Because we want to arrive a particular position. Or we want to have some clothing. Or we want to put on some particular raiment. So we look for money by all means. Like I said, it can lead you into stealing. Into stealing covetousness. The day I had that encounter. And after I went back home that day, self died in me. Today I can go out of my house without putting on earrings. It won't bother me. I can go out of my house without uh, minding the kind of jewelries I put on. It won't bother me. Why? Because that, that accessory that was not, uh, uh, was in me that stood as a hindrance to the degree to which God will use me got removed out of my life and that's why i said part of brokenness is when god comes into your life and prunes you he prunes to remove the accessories that will not allow you look like who he wants you to be let me tell you the truth until you are broken you can't look like the vessel god wants you to look like and that's why he told jeremiah i am taking you to the potter's house i will show you what it takes to be broken I will show you how I as a potter, your Lord and your Savior, can design you and then break you and remold you. One day I told God, I said, ah, uh, okay, I was just talking with God and God was in, in, imprinting in my spirit that you need to pay the price for so so thing. And I asked God, I said, God, all the prices I've been paying, is it not enough? And then God blow, brought an illustration instantly before me he said for the joy that was set ahead of jesus for the joy that was set ahead of him he despised the cross for the joy that was set ahead of him he despised the cross there are certain things you have to despise and you can't do
do them on your own until you are broken. And that day he showed me a picture. He said Jesus needed to be in Samaria, but he had to go, go through Galilee. And he showed me by graphic illustration that day, like those of us in Nigeria, I want to travel to Kaduna from Abuja, but I went through Kwara State, from Kwara State to Niger State, from Niger State to Kaduna. He said that was the kind of journey Jesus took just to meet with one woman. The Bible calls her Samaritan woman. The woman he met with at the well of Samaria. Listen to me, God's people. If we must go far with this God, if we must go far in destiny lane, then there are these accessories we must drop and live this life of brokenness that Jesus, by his mercies, has introduced us into. The book of Psalms 51, our mama read it last week. The psalm is understood that part of the accessories he was carrying would allow the fullness of the beauty of Christ to be reflected in him. And then he cried out. He said, God, create in me a clean heart. I would like to round up this way. One day, someone came to my house. I was a pastor's wife, pastor's wife. I said, then, a pastor's wife. I wasn't just a member. At least a pastor's wife, you will expect some degree of maturity. And then I was serving this particular person. The person also someone I respect spiritually. Um, I, I wasn't feeling too fine. So I was doing that service as if it was a burden to me. So as I lifted up the food, the meal, to go sit on the table for this particular visitor, I was murmuring in my heart. I said, God, I'm tired. This person should understand. Because anytime this person is around, I don't have my time. I was murmuring. Before I stepped towards the kitchen door, I had this voice in my spirit. He said, uh, Uzziah, was it Uzziah? Serve the Lord, but not with a right spirit. I dropped the food that, I was, that was in my hand. I quickly knelt down at that spot and said, Father, I am sorry. He served, but not with a right heart. A lot of us are in church serving also, but not with a right heart. Could it be your own life today? Yours might not be covetousness. It could be that you're serving in the house of God with no more. You're serving your spiritual leaders with no more. You're serving that your boss in the office with murmuring, your heart is filled of bitterness. You don't see the need why you must be doing the extra time, the extra work you are doing. God is saying tonight, you should cry out like the, 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 the psalmist David did. He said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. He said, purge me. First he asked God, he said, purge me. In verse 7, purge me with high soap. And, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So I'll be going before God and be crying. Show him those accessories. Remember Psalms 142, verse 1 and 2. The psalmist says, I cried unto the Lord. I cried unto the Lord with my whole heart, and I showed him my trouble. I showed him that thing that is paining me. I showed him the accessories that will not allow this vessel to be broken. The accessories that are making my vessel look like a dirty vessel. Remember in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says in a great house, there are so many vessels, some to honor, some to dishonor. You can't be a vessel of honor if you're not a broken vessel. You can't be a vessel that is useful in the hand of God if you are not a broken vessel, because that same passage said, some to honor, some to dishonor. And he said, if you must purge, if you must be a vessel that must be honorable and used by the master for every good work, you must purge yourself. Purging is necessary. Purging
Coaching is part of the way that introduces us to the system of being broken. So you're going to cry before God now. Lord, touch me. Read me of this aspect of my life. Read me of the spirit of pride. Read me of the spirit of arrogance. Read me of the spirit of covetousness. Read me. Makata lebu sakatalia le kotobari kata. Lord, read me. Purge me from self. Whatever will not allow me to reflect the fullness of your glory. Those things, oh God, that affect my Christian identity. Those things that affect my Christian testimony. Those things that place a question mark when my name is mentioned. Lord, deliver me from them. I ask that you purge me like the psalmist cry. Tell me approach you with the blood of Jesus. Ask him to cleanse you with the blood of Jesus. Ask him to make you whiter than snow. Ask him to take away the accessories of the flesh, the garment of the flesh, the display of the flesh. Those things that will not allow you. That even when your testimony is being mentioned by your neighbors, this one goes to church every day. Or somebody is mentioning that is passing by to your neighbors. This person is a believer. She is always, he is always found in church. And then your neighbors will say, this one that loves fighting, that shows that a fighting spirit is in you. And that could be an sorcery that you need to deal with. That you need to ask God to purge from you. Makata ye boroko toko toko to. Le kita kalia. Le marako sakatalia. Le barako tolia. Some of us need to be purged. To put away, to ask God to put away the spirit, the accessory of gossip. God can't reveal secret to us. Why? Because we are tell bearers. Our mouth leaks like tank leaks. Our mouth leaks like bottles leak. Our mouth does not keep information. So God can entrust spiritual information into our hand. No matter the hours we spend in prayer, he can't tell us another man's secret. Why? Because we have a leaking mouth. Our mouth is like a leakage, a, a, a basket that has a leakage. Ask God to poach you. Lord, poach me. Mine was covetousness. And God used that day to poach me. God used that day to prune me. Until there is a point in there can't be a pruning and until you are pruned you can't be broken lord prune me even as you porch me today so that i can be fruitful the bible says in the book of john that until we are pruned by the master we can't be fruitful Makatalia, the essence of christianity is for us to be a fruit in john chapter 15 verse 16 he said he has not chosen us he, we have not chosen him. He has chosen us that we should go and bring forth fruit and that our fruit should abide. So ask him to prune you so that you can be more fruitful, so that your Christianity, your Christian identity will be showcased, that men will see you and give glory to your father who is in heaven. Lord, help me. Let every sorcery that does not allow me reflect your glory be dealt with even now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for taking away all the trust, all the trust in the book of Proverbs chapter 25. The book of Proverbs chapter 25. The Bible says, Proverbs 25 verse 4. The Bible says, take away the dross. There shall comfort a vessel for the finer. Lord, take away the dross. Take away those things that filters into my life that does not allow me to live out the fullness of the life that Christ has obtained for me. Thank you, King of Glory. I give you praise for answering. Remember, young lady and young man, sometimes it could be these accessories that hinder us from even being sighted. They cover us. They become a covering that do not allow somebody else to sight us. So, in as much as you desire to be married, ask God to prune you, to remove from you the dross, the things that will not allow you to reflect the beauty and the glory of Christ that makes for attraction. Hallelujah. This is how far we go today. Accessories that hinders brokenness will not be found in us. In Jesus' mighty name. What a privilege this afternoon, this morning. To connect with the God that brings out beauty out of ashes. It doesn't matter the state of your life now. It doesn't matter how you think, how broken you think you are. If you can hand over those broken pieces, 
that you got broken by yourself god will mold them and bring out beauty out of ashes you're here you don't have a personal relationship with him there is no way he can dominate you there is no way he can prune you can you say with me lord jesus come into my life be my lord and personal savior today i acknowledge that i am a child of god i acknowledge that i am born again today lord i ask that you write my name in the book of life make me your child in the name of jesus christ thank you father in jesus mighty name if you just pray this prayer and you are online connected please there are details now displayed if you are around where this uh, information can be easily accessed or reached by you please call the number that is online displayed now but if you are not where you can connect easily with this number look out for a bible believing church connect with the pastor and tell the pastor you got born again the pastor will teach you advise you on the steps you need to take so that you can grow and get rooted in christ praise the lord so today is my privilege to welcome all those that are connected with us online on behalf of mommy wallet joseph and please in case you have not shared this broadcast kindly help us do that Again, I say it on her behalf that it is offering time. Offering is uh, a platform created by God where we partner with him for financial posture. The truth is that it is the desire of God for us to have all the desire and need to have. God called Abraham alone, but the Bible, Genesis chapter 13, after in chapter 12 by genesis chapter 13 abraham was rich why because abraham who partnered with god in so offering time should always be time to partner with god with your seed because he is the one that gives you the seed and the bible says in genesis chapter 8 verse 22 that there is always a seed time that precedes the harvest time so i would like you to package your quality seed now we package your seed ensure you don't leave this platform without dropping an offering because the bible says you are not to appear before him empty so with our seed in our hands or our seed being transferred i want you to appreciate god for the privilege he has given you to be a seed sower and because you are a seed sower your bountiful harvest in return shall not elude you in Jesus mighty name. God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for always coming online. Each time we call on for this meeting every Wednesday, the Lord God of heaven, whom you have come to seek will bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. So on behalf of our own mama, mama Wale Joseph, I'm saying from here, Karibu sana. See you again next week, Wednesday, same time, same station, same platform. Thank you so much for all those that are behind the scene working to make this broadcast a beautiful one. Dante and Co. God bless you. Those of you online, God bless you. Those that shared, God bless you. Those that drop nugget, God bless you. We love you so much. See you next week, Wednesday. Bye-bye. Love you. Amen.